welcome back. I am so, so grateful for everyone who's decided to subscribe, decided to like. Um, I'm not good at this talking thing, but I'm back today with another oil. So disclaimer, this is my first time trying this oil, but I decided to go ahead and make it, show you guys how to make it. And I'm going to be using this in my hair for the next coming weeks. And later, after I finish using the oil, and New York's still rustling and bustling, as you can hear. Just wait for this, this ambulance to go by. After I finish trying out this oil, there'll be an update to see how this worked on my hair. I'm gonna give you a demo today to kind of show you how I'm gonna start using this oil. Yeah, if you are curious how this oil helps my hair, make sure you're subscribing, make sure you let me know with a thumbs up, and let's get right into it. All right, guys, so here's my fenugreek seeds that I'm gonna use for another purpose. And here is the glass jar that we're going to be using for the moringa oil. Um, I got this moringa leaf powder from an eBay seller. It's just some organic moringa leaf powder. Um, and as you can see, it's grinded up really nicely. Um, so we're just gonna take a glass bowl and boil some hot water and kind of make a double boil kind of situation. I'm gonna take two teaspoons, oh, three teaspoons, four teaspoons <laughs> of um, the powder and we're going to use a cup of coconut oil. So a cup of coconut oil to four teaspoons of powder. And we're gonna put that on Put that together and mix it together and let it double boil and get hot and all that all that good stuff and then i'm going to take a little bit of this avocado oil i love the way this avocado oil makes my hair feel it's a real nice light oil and we're going to mix that together and let that steam really nicely over the double boiler um we're going to put it for about 15 minutes and just, you know, I touch the oil just to make sure it's hot, make sure it's steaming, make sure everything's getting really nicely incorporated. Um, if it feels warm to my skin, I know that the oil is it's pretty warm enough. And we're gonna take this cheesecloth. Now this isn't the best method. Um, I probably should have not been lazy and put it in a different container, but I thought I was being hot stuff when I put this cheesecloth on the um the little thing but you see look what happened to me yeah I suck so I tried to make this little makeshift funnel and that didn't work so if you guys do this you know put it in put it in something that works better than, <laughs> than what I did here lord please but it worked out in the end everything's strained everything's nice as you can see from the little slow drip Everything's incorporated. And then I just squeeze everything out. You just basically don't want any of the powder in there. So as long as that happens, you're good to go. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this tea bottle. I know it looks gross, but it's because I usually use my teas in it. And my scalp has been so itchy in the past days. I'm in, I'm in New York City, so I'm being quarantined. I haven't really been taking that the best care of my hair or my skin so it's time for me to change that last night I had to take my head massager and scratch all through my scalp because it was that itchy so I'm taking the tea and I'm spraying it I'm focusing it on my scalp it'll get to the rest of my hair but I kind of just want to focus it on my scalp for a second. Get under that little fro part. And my hair is so kinky because it's been up in a bun, not getting any moisture or oil or, I just have been neglecting it. I'm separating it. I'm gonna loosely separate it into four pieces very carefully Ugh. very carefully 
throw up again. Oh, and this is that same tea that's on my channel. If you look up the fenugreek spray tea, I I use some of it in a bottle and I put the rest in the fridge and it preserves it. The hair is becoming malleable. So I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna do a light spray here. The reason I'm doing a light spray is because I don't want my hair completely wet. If your hair is completely wet, it will like kind of get weak. Making sure this is nice and malleable and I can I can somewhat finger detangle it, but not completely wet. If I feel any dry spots, I'll just go back in with the tea. As you can see, you see that little chunk up there? That's danger zone right there. And I'm just kind of getting the tea soaked into the hair. Into the hair. Look how look how much shrinkage versus the part that's been taken care of. So I'm moving around a lot. It's a little bit too tangly for me right now. It has lengthened just by being like moisturized, but it's just a little bit, it's just a little bit too tangly for me, as you can see. But look how much it lengthened just by, look how much it lengthened just by me wetting it. Like, to me that's absolutely, nuts that just shows you you have to like you have to take care of your hair just make sure it's wet now one thing about it being wet it's the difference between your hair being wet and it being moisturized moisturizes when this actually is absorbed it's a little bit of time for me because i have low porosity hair before i go ahead and put an oil in i want the water to actually be inside of the hair so me squeezing it helps with that and this is the oil it is so nice and beautifully dark it really infused in there and there's like there's like no like particles of moringa powder in there it's just like straight dark oil i mean it's a little bit of particles but not 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 like the fenugreek oil obviously so the smell i honestly don't know if this smell is from the moringa or the new coconut oil i'm using but it smells like cooking grease i'm not too much of a fan of it i'm gonna be honest with you it's pretty ceramic as you can see it's like got that my ladies <laughs> ladies know what that looks like but it's kind of got like a little bit of that egg yolky consistency which i like because i like it to be a little bit on the ceramic side and i'm just gonna go in and i'm gonna start at my ends and continue up the hair and as i'm coating this oil i'm also separating clumps because the oil helps me more than the water when it comes to that I'm going to continue doing that for these last four sections. I'll give you a good look at what this section looks like with the oil on it. And I'll come back and I'll show you guys what all the sections look like with oil on them. Alright guys, so this is it all coated with the oil. It's looking pretty stretched and nice, as you can see. So this is what it looks like. I have one more step before I put this up in a bun to absorb for the next few hours. And that's using my shea butter. If you've watched, I don't remember, the twist out video. Yeah, this has been one of the best things that could happen for my hair growth what I do is 
I take those fragile ends that like to break off just by the wind blowing on them and I take a good amount of shea butter and I just coat like this lower half. And this is for extra, cause I like a little bit thicker of an oil on the ends of my hair. Cause they're, I have fine hair and it, they're, they get kind of wispy at the end. So for me, any kind of like extra protectant, thick without like causing lint and stuff to stick to my hair, anything that helps it stay coated and stay safe, I, I love it. So this to me has been the best. One of the, this is one of the, the, the keys right here. Your hair and just take a slab of shea butter and just coat it. Just coat all the ends. Go ahead and do this before I wrap it up in the bun and I'll be right back. All right guys, last step. Take it an extra step and make sure it's absorbing. Before I do that, I'm gonna take some shea butter and I'm gonna put it right where my bun is because I noticed that area is staying a little bit dry. If you're gonna wear your hair curly, this will flatten it. But if you're gonna be around the house up in a bun like me, you wanna take that extra step just to make sure that these hairs that are, you know, wrapped in the bun are, you know, seeing some TLC. So it's so easy to put oil on the ends of your hair, but you forget that little crown part. So I'm gonna just pull all the hair up. Then I'm gonna twist, twist right here, hold the twist, and then loosely twist down the length of the hair. When I get to these hairs right here, just for good measure, I like to put a little bit more shea butter and wrap it. Take those ends and tuck them right in the middle. And that's how I moisturize and seal my hair. If you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe. Uh, soon we'll be seeing how well the Moringa oil works for my hair. The tea, I already know that's the goat. <laughs> and if you're interested in that tea, it should be linked somewhere in the eye cards. Um, that is that is mainly what I use to moisturize and seal my hair. I don't really use water. I'll use this tea. And I'll spray that tea before I oil my scalp. I'll spray that tea before I oil the rest of my hair. And this tea has a good amount of protein in it. So if you're protein sensitive, please use with caution. But if you have fine, if you have fine hair like myself, um, I could use that extra protein because I only do it maybe three to four days after wash day. So yeah, so if you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. I probably already said that, but it really helps out the channel. It really lets me know that this is the type of content you guys want to see. And if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. And until next time, guys, peace out.